Thank you for tuning in to my presentation on integrated magnetics. My name is John Gallagher, and I am the Global Marketing Manager at Pulse Electronics, and I have several decades of experience with power magnetic design. It is evident that the key drivers for magnetic design are to make them smaller, more efficient, lower cost, and thermally acceptable. Many of the advancements that allow these goals to be achieved come from outside of the specific magnetic design. Clever new topologies that allow faster switching, component advancements such as GAN and silicon carbide, and advances in magnetic materials which allow for lower losses or higher saturation. But once one has chosen the best topology, best materials, what more can the magnetic designer do to meet the key goals? Integration, combining two or more magnetics into a single package. There are multiple examples of how magnetic integration enables smaller, more efficient, and cost-effective solutions. An active clamp forward has a main transformer and output inductor, which, be, which can be integrated into a single stacked component. Because the magnetic field from the inductor is in opposition to the transformer, there is cancellation which allows one of the original four core halves to be eliminated, saving footprint and cost and less core and less flux means higher efficiency. Another example is a two-phase buck regulator, where one can integrate the two separate inductors into a single package. Like the previous example, flux from each inductor is in opposition, which means the core area, shown in red on the center bottom picture, can be minimized. Like all integration projects, it is critical to verify that unintended coupling does not affect circuit operation. It is possible to integrate more than two magnetics into a single package. In server and storage applications, with many multi-phase rails, one can take the four, five, or six-phase individual inductors and gang them together into a non-coupled but fully integrated solution. This saves board space and also has the adv added advantage of creating one mechanically stable component instead of multiple tall and potentially tippy individual inductors. In high-power LLC circuits, it is often required to use a separate resonant inductor in series with the main transformer. In a similar manner as the previous forward converter example, it is possible to stack the resonant inductor into the main transformer so that they share a magnetic core half, which again reduces footprint, cost, and improves efficiency. Despite the myriad of use cases, End users are often reluctant to initiate or incorporate integrated solutions as they do have some potential drawbacks. There are very few off-the-shelf solutions, so customization is necessary. The initial magnetic design is more complicated. Integration can make debugging a circuit more difficult as it is harder to isolate the problem on the interconnected magnetic. It can also be harder to tweak or adjust magnetic parameters on an integrated device. However, if increasing power density is a major goal, then magnetic integration can achieve the desired results without increasing costs. Although the initial magnetic design is more complicated, the various equations can be derived, the overall flux flow can be visualized, and a sound magnetic design can be realized. A good example of the use case and design of integrated magnetics is the common mode and differential mode chokes. Before getting into the design of the integrated device, let's first have a quick review of the role of common mode and differential mode chokes. In general, there are two types of conducted noise, differential and common mode, and each type requires a different filtering solution. The top diagram shows a sketch of a power supply, including the source and the load, and shows, in green, the power supply current circulating through the system. The middle diagram, shows the same sketch, but this time with the differential mode noise current shown in red. Differential mode noise travels along the line and returns through the neutral. The bottom diagram shows the same sketch, but this time with the common mode noise current shown in purple. Common mode noise travels along both line and neutral in the same direction and then returns through ground via parasitic elements within the system. The simplest differential mode filter involves the placement of a single winding inductor in the line path and a capacitor between line and neutral. 
when high frequency differential noise, shown in red, tries to circulate through the system, it comes up against the high impedance of the differential mode inductor and therefore takes the low impedance path through the capacitor. The differential mode choke effectively blocks the high frequency noise from moving through the system, but the desired signal, in green, is able to pass. It should be noted that because the differential mode inductor is in the line path, it sees the full line current and therefore must be able to handle the peak power supply currents without saturating. As stated previously, a differential mode choke is really just a single winding inductor. As shown in the top left diagram, the line current, shown in red, flows through the inductor winding, shown in yellow, and this creates a magnetic field within the core, shown in blue. The differential mode inductor must provide the required inductance and impedance with a low enough winding resistance to ensure the part does not have excessive losses or overheat. In addition, the part must be able to withstand the peak current without saturating. The top right drawing shows the simplified reluctance model of a differential mode choke. The source in the magnetic model is the line current, I line, times the number of turns, N, which creates the flux, shown in blue, which flows through the reluctance. From the above equations, it can be seen that the peak flux density is equal to the inductance times the peak line current, divided by the turns, times the cross-sectional area of the core. Because of the need to handle the DC offset, differential mode chokes often use either powdered iron or gap ferrite cores. As a design example, a 350 microhenry 2 amp differential mode choke was created using a 0.8 inch OD 75 perm powdered iron core with 54 turns of 23 gauge wire. This design would yield a resistance of 180 milliohms or roughly 720 milliwatts of loss and be approximately 4.76 centimeters cubed. The simplest common mode filter involves the placement of a dual winding magnetic in the line and neutral path and capacitors between line and neutral and ground as shown in the above sketch. When high frequency common mode noise tries to circulate through the system, it comes up against the high impedance of the common mode inductor and therefore takes the low impedance path through the capacitors. The common mode choke effectively blocks the high frequency noise from moving through the system. It should be noted that because the common mode inductor sees both the line and neutral currents, but in opposite directions, there is essentially no net DC offset within the common mode choke. As stated previously, a common mode choke is really just a dual winding magnetic. As shown in the top left diagram, the line current, shown in red, flows through the two windings, shown in yellow, and this creates a magnetic field within the magnetic core. However, because the magnetic field created by each winding oppose one another, there is effectively no net field within the core. The common mode magnetic must provide the required inductance or impedance with a low enough re winding resistance to ensure the part does not have excessive losses or overheat. However, because there is no net field, there is no concern with saturation. This is further illustrated in the reluctance model in the top right corner. There are two opposing sources in the magnetic model, I line, times the number of turns, n, and I neutral, times the number of turns, n, essentially creating a no DC flux in the core. Because there is no need to handle a DC offset or store energy, the common mode choke typically is designed using a high perm, ungapped ferrite core, or amorphous core. As a design example, a 1.6 millihenry 2 amp common mode choke was created using a 0.6 inch OD 5k perm ferrite core with 25 turns of 26 gauge wire per winding. This design would yield a resistance of 65 milliohms or 520 milliwatts of loss and be approximately 2.89 centimeters cubed. As shown previously in our design examples, the two separate components accounted for 1.24 watts of total loss and occupied 8.9 centimeters squared of PCB space and 7.65 centimeters cubed of product volume. In order to improve the power supply density and improve overall efficiency, it is desired to combine the two filter magnetics into a single component. The above filter circuit is just a redrawn version of what has been shown previously. 
the only differences being that the differential mode and common mode filter magnetics are now shown next to one another, and also the differential mode choke has been split into two separate components, each with half the original impedance. Functionally, the two circuits are identical. Conceptually, it should now be possible to combine the magnetic elements within the orange shaded area into a single component with the goal of reducing losses, board space, volume and cost, but careful design must be done to ensure that the component does not saturate. In the top left corner, the component we are trying to create from the previous page has been copied over for reference. Although not shown previously, any real mutually wound magnetic, common mode chokes or transformers, will have some amount of uncoupled flux or leakage inductance which affects the coupling of the magnetic. This is depicted in the drawing in the top right corner which shows some flux, green lines, escaping the core and not coupling to the adjacent winding. In a standard common mode choke, this leakage inductance is very low and get, can therefore be ignored. However, in the integrated common mode differential mode choke, we are going to try to purposely increase the amount of leakage in the core, and therefore the reluctance model of the CM choke can be redrawn as shown in the bottom left corner, with a reluctance, RC, representing the path taken by the uncoupled flux or leakage. It should be noted that at one extreme, with a very high RC, there would be very little flux flowing through this element, and one essentially has an ideal common mode choke. At the other extreme, with a very low RC reluctance, all of the flux from each winding would be uncoupled from the other winding, and essentially one would have two separate and uncoupled inductors. In the bottom right corner, the schematic from the top left is just redrawn in a more standard transformer type format. The transformer schematic from the previous page has been redrawn in the top center diagram and it is now possible to derive the formulas for designing an integrated common mode and differential mode inductor. It should be noted that the schematic shown is identical to that used to define a coupled inductor used in multi-phase voltage regulators and as a result a more complete account of the equations can be found in the article referenced above. To design an integrated component one must determine how to measure and calculate the values of 2 times LK, which represents the differential mode inductance, and the value of LM, which represents the common mode inductance. This can be done by observing, as shown on the left side of the page, that if one measures the open circuit inductance between pins 1 and 4, one is effectively measuring LM plus LK. If the equivalent reluctance model is drawn for this open circuit inductance, it is clear that this measurement is equal to R plus RC in parallel with R. Similarly, as shown on the right side of the page, one can measure the reverse series inductance between pins 1 and 2 with pins 3 and 4 shorted. This yields a measurement of 2 times LK. If the equivalent reluctance model is drawn for this reverse series, it is clear that this measurement is equal to RC plus a half of R. From the above equations, one has all the information necessary to design the inductance parameters of an integrated common mode differential mode inductor, but no information on whether or not the inductor will saturate. As stated on the previous page, the static values of differential mode inductance, 2 times LK, and common mode inductance, LM, have now been determined. However, it is still necessary to determine the flux density in each portion of the core to ensure that the part will not saturate. Using Milman's theorem, it is possible to derive these values as shown above. These flux values can be verified by analyzing the extreme conditions. First, if looking at a very tightly coupled CMDM component where LK would approach zero, then the DC flux goes to zero and there will be no saturation, which is the same as previously derived for a standard common mode choke. Second, if looking at a very loosely coupled CMDM component, where LM approaches zero, then the DC flux approaches LK divided by N times I, which is the same as previously derived for a standard differential mode choke. Based on the above and preceding equations, the CMDM component can now be designed and compared to individual components. Previously, a DM choke, 350 microhenries, and a CM choke, 
1.6 millihenries, were designed for a 2 amp circuit, and the resultant power losses, footprint, and volume are shown above. Pulse has designed a CM DM component as a comparison with the same 350 microhenries of differential mode inductance, 2 times LK, and the same common mode inductance, LM. The combined part has a resistance of 110 milliohms per winding and a size of 25 by 20 by 12. Comparing the integrated CMDM to a non-integrated component shows that the performance is far superior. Power loss is reduced by 30%. The component volume is reduced by 22%. And the component footprint is reduced by 44%. In addition, the overall cost of a CMDM component is lower than the combined cost of the two non-integrated parts. In conclusion, integration of magnetic components can improve efficiency, increase power density, and lower costs, all while meeting thermal requirements. Although the initial design iteration of the magnetic requires some forethought and analysis, the equations and concepts are well known. The detailed example of the CMDM highlights the design approach and shows the overall improvement in performance. Integrated magnetics have already been widely adopted in some high power topologies, but as pressure to improve power supplies increases, integration will become more mainstream. Thank you for listening to my presentation.